Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Kashe de bo re baka pala bayata. Masia de bo sendo de bo ko re bo ko pala bahate bahata. Ke mali pradika pala bayate bahate. Ke brandi hila bala bayada da da bahate pradika pala bayada da baya. Mosondo de bo ko re bo ka pala bo zende de bo ko pala bayete se se te dei. Ila pradika posa da bahate kani na da bahate. And precious Father, I want to say thank you for yet another opportunity to be here. Holy Spirit of God, you welcome. I take authority right now over every spirit that is not of God. I take authority over the spirit of the Antichrist that seeks to steal the seeds of the word of God sown to the heart of men. At the crown that let that you have no part or portion here. Let there be a free flow of the spirit. Let the words of my mouth, everything that will come out, be in accordance to the word God has sent me to preach tonight. That the lives of believers may be transformed. That Jesus gets the glory. For in Jesus' powerful and precious name, we're afraid. Amen. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining Corporate Prayers. We're going to go straight to what God has for us tonight. And the title of what God has for us tonight says, God's grace makes the difference. Child of God, I want you to know that without the grace of God, you cannot amount to who you're supposed to be here on this head. Someone described or defined grace as God's riches or redemption at Christ's expense. And our anchor scripture is from Genesis 8 verses 1. The Bible says in Genesis 8 verses 1, And God remembered Noah and every living thing, all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth. I want you to put emphasis and I want you to personalize the scripture. The Bible says, and God remembered Noah. I want you to say to yourself, and God remembered my name. I want you to put your name right there. And God remembered the book of Elijah before. And God remembered Nanny. And God remembered Renny. And God remembered Nancy. And God remembered goodness. I want you to put your name right there. And God remembered Noah. And every living thing that is upon the face of the earth. You know, if you read the preceding verses before or chapters before Genesis 8 verses 1, if you go straight to Genesis 5, 6 verses 5, the Bible says, And God saw that the wickedness of man and the art was very great, and the imagination of the thoughts of the art of man was evil continually. And the Bible says in Genesis 6 verses 6, and it repented the Lord that he had made man upon the earth, and he grieved him out his hands. And verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and every creeping thing, and the fowl of the air, for it had repented me that I made it. But if you go to Genesis 6, 6 verse 8, the Bible says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The title of tonight says, Grace, God's grace makes the difference. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Despite all the things that were happening, despite the confusion that was about to hit the earth, despite the destruction that was about to hit the earth, the Bible says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It does not matter what is happening around you. I want you to say to yourself, I will find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Child of God, all we need to become, what we really need to become on this earth is the grace of God. Grace is everything Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Without the grace of God, you cannot fully attain your potential as a born again believer. I want you to say to yourself, if one person would escape, God was about to destroy the earth. God was about to turn everything he had made to nothing. But the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. I want you to say to yourself, if one person will escape, that person will be me. I will find grace in the eyes of the Lord. The first time the word grace was mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 6 verses 8. There is something called the law of first mention. The first time grace was mentioned, it meant that God was about to rescue one person. God's mercy was about to distinguish one man on the surface of the earth. God was about to wipe out every living thing he had created. But one man found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I wanted to say to yourself in the name of Jesus, God's grace will make the difference for me. Our anchor scripture said, Genesis 1 verse 6 says, And God remembered Noah. Child of God, I want you to know before there can be a remembrance, before the presence of the Lord, first thing that must happen is you must find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Without you finding grace, there can be no remembrance. Child of God, you might have been praying so long. You might have been saying, Father, remember me. Remember me for this. Remember me for that. The Bible says in Psalm 102 verses 
verses 12. The Bible says, But thou, O Lord, endures forever. Thy remembrance is upon the upon the surface of the earth to all generations and the bible says in psalm 102 verses 12 but thou should arise and have mercy psalm 102 verses 12 talked about remembrance well before there can be a remembrance in the presence of the lord grace has to go before you genesis 8 verses 1 says and god remembered noah but before there could have been a remembrance of noah grace went out of him the bible says and noah found grace in the eyes of the lord i just read psalm 102 to us the bible says but thou shalt arise and have mercy upon zion for the set time to favor has come before you can find favor in the eyes of the lord mercy has to go before you child of god what is that thing you seek the bible says and noah found grace in the sight of the lord only after you found grace was it remembered the Bible says in Romans 9 verses 15, the Bible says, And God said unto Moses, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy upon, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion upon. Therefore, it is not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it, but God that shows mercy. You can want all you want. You can desire things. You can cry. But unto when grace, unto when you have found grace in the eyes of the Lord, like Noah found grace, there will be no remembrance. For thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the set time, it was a time to favor Zion. But something had to go forward. Something had to come before the presence of the Lord. No wonder the Bible says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. Something has to go before the presence of the Lord like a sweet smell in salvo before the Lord can remember you. Child of God, have you been praying? Father, remember me. Father, do a new thing in my life. That is putting the cards before the us. The first thing you need to pray about is mercy. When grace shows up at the scene, on the scene, every other thing will be taken care of. The set time to favor Zion was then, but something had to go ahead, for thou shalt arise and have mercy. Without mercy, mercy and grace are the same thing. Mercy, I once preached about mercy, the mystery of mercy. Grace is undeserved favor, something that you don't merit, something that the works of your hand could not bring to you, but God gives it to you at Christ's expense. But thou should arise and have mercy upon Lucy, for the set time to favor has come. Yeah, the set time. Child of God, all you need to become what you really need to become is the grace of God. Without grace, there can be no remembrance. So tonight we're going to pray. Tonight we're going to pray. The psalmist said, David, you know, David was someone that understood. David lived in the dispensation of law, but he operated like he was in the dispensation that we are right now. We're in the dispensation of grace. David understood the loving kindness of the Lord. David understood the mercy of God. That's why David would do so many things. There was a time David, you know, sinned against God. And God sent the prophet Nathan to him and said, tell my servant to choose between three things. That shows you how much David understood God. God was giving David options to choose. God was about to punish him, but God even gave him options to choose from it. The psalmist said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to the loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Mercy and grace is all we need to become who we need to become. God's grace makes the difference. You might have been living a life of struggle. You might have been trying to achieve so many things until when mercy goes before you, until when the grace of God speaks for you. There's something called the grace of exemption. That was what happened to Noah. That was why God could remember him. Noah was in the ark. The earth was being destroyed. But because God had grace upon Noah in Genesis 6 verses 8, because he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, in Genesis 8 verses 1, God was able to remember him. Despite all the things that were happening around him, I want us to pray, Father, have mercy upon me according to the loving kindness. Father, let me find grace in your sight. Without grace, you cannot become all we need to become. Without grace, I cannot become all I need to become. Therefore, I want us to say, Father, let me find grace in your sight. Like Noah found grace in your sight. Sight. Like Noah found grace in your sight. Father, show me your grace. Let me find grace. I come boldly. The Bible says we should come boldly. Don't come fidgeting. Don't come being afraid. Don't come being scared. The Bible says come boldly. It does not matter what you've done. It does not matter what you're about to do. Come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy.
mercy. It is only after God has shown you grace and mercy that the time of remembrance can come. I want us to say, Father, let me find grace in your sight. In the name of Jesus, Father, let me find grace so that my remembrance may come before you. In the name of Jesus, Father, let me find grace. Have mercy upon me. Father, let me find grace before you so that my time of remembrance might come before you. Let grace go like a smelling sweet savor before you. Let your mercy speak for me. Have mercy upon me, Lord, according to the loving kindness, according to the multitude of the tender mercy. Father, let me find grace in your sight. Let me find grace in your sight. All I need is your grace to become all I need to become. Father, show me your grace. Father, show me your grace. Father, show me your grace in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. So I want to find grace as God's riches of redemption at Christ's expense. Grace is everything Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Your healing, your prosperity, your redemption, your salvation. Everything is embedded in grace. Child of God, for we to become what we really need to become an act, we need the grace of God. So grace is not all about because you've sinned. You don't need to ask for mercy only because you have sinned or transgressed. The Bible says it's because of the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. It's just mercy. It's not because you're holier than thou. It's not because you're the best person. It's not because you have done everything God said you should, you should do. If you look at Abraham, the story of Abraham, Abraham raised it at some point, but God's grace spoke for him. Mercy spoke for him. There is nobody go through the Bible that ever became who God said it will become without the mercy of God speaking. Because by our human efforts, we cannot achieve much. The Bible says all our holiness and nothing but filthy rags. We are not saved by good works. We are saved unto good works. Therefore, going to this new week, know that the grace of God will speak for you. On that job, God's grace will speak for you. In your relationship, in your finance, you will find grace. And when you find grace, a time of remembrance will come. I want you to say, I have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I'm the one the Lord has shown mercy. I want you to put those words in your mouth. I'm the one the Lord has shown mercy. I'm the one that has found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Therefore, this is my time of remembrance. This is my time of favor. This third time to favor me is now. Yeah, the same time is now. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we're afraid. Amen. Thank you for joining corporate prayers. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to have everyone here. So next time, have a blessed week. God's grace makes the difference. Corporate prayer loves you. God loves you. I love you. So next time, have a beautiful week. Blessings and you.